Hello and welcome back to Supposedly Fun. My name is Greg and I am here today for a bookshelf tour. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on an introduction, but I wanted to quickly set this up. Obviously from the name of this, you know what we're going to do. I did do a bookshelf tour in a series of four or five videos back in 2020. I'll link them down below if you would like to check them out. The process of doing that was really labor intensive, really time intensive, a lot of that. So I kind of internally swore to myself that I was never going to do that again. However, someone on Instagram, lids221b, requested that I do another one. I had posted a photo of me in front of my bookshelf on Instagram. And it just got me thinking, actually. A lot has changed. I've reorganized the top of the bookshelf. There have been hauls, unhauls, all that in the two years since. And I started thinking maybe there's a fun way of doing this that won't be so labor intensive for me. So I think almost vlog style, I'm going to periodically through the week just take some footage of me in front of the shelves. I'm not going to hold up every book like I did in the first video, I'll just get some footage of the shelves, tell some funny stories about a couple of the books, and try to move really quickly so we can have a manageable bookshelf tour that isn't spread across a couple of different videos and really long. That's a lot for me, and I know it's a lot for you as a viewer. So I'm going to stop talking right now, and we'll get to the bookshelf tour and see how this goes. Here is shelf number one. We'll talk about this one first. So on the top, I am an Oscar obsessive, and you'll see a lot of that throughout. I have my Academy Awards handbook, my little mock Oscar for best husband. That's right. Sorry to your husband if you have one. It's me. I'm the best husband. These are a bunch of entertainment weeklies. I used to have a lot more, but I now only have the Oscar issues from all the time that I was a subscriber. Um, a lot of them. So, yeah, I hold on to them because I'm a nerd. Uh, this is my old typewriter. It does work, but obviously with all this stuff piled on it, I don't really use it. This little card catalog was given to me for my birthday uh, two or three years ago by Joel and my foster son. Oscar books, pride book. These were gifts at our wedding. Let's get to the actual books. I am not going to talk about every book individually but I'll make sure you get a good look at each shelf. Some of these books I've read, some of these I will get to at some point. Some of them I really er have been wanting to get to for a very long time and have not. I recently got this print of Gaze the Word, which is a bookstore in London that I would really like to visit someday. At some point I want to hang it in here, but I have not yet, so I just kind of situated it right in there. So there's what's behind it for now. Slide that back in. Okay, next shelf. Got some Pat Barker books. Damien Barr, God, I really need to read that book. Nobody knows about this book. I remember it being really fun. I should probably reread it at some point. God, I really need to read the sellout. Here is a Pulitzer book, Humboldt's Gift by Saul Bellow. I will need to get to that for my project at some point. Lots of other things. This is a movie book. I'm obsessed with the Oscars and anything related to that. That's all fun. Here is the next shelf. I've never read Jane Eyre. I've had this copy of this book forever. I used to be really obsessed with the modern library books and I collected them. I don't think they really make them like this anymore, but I used to have a bunch of them. Uh, the Gifts of the Body. Great book, by the way. Ruby for Jungle was wonderful as well. And there's, I was also for a long time really obsessed with these. They were from somewhere around the year 2000. It's the Penguin Great Books of the 20th Century. I was really obsessed with them and had a whole bunch of them. Um, this is one of the ones that is still here. I'm gonna leave that out while I finish this shelf at least didn't have room for this right now, but it's the most recent winner of the Pulitzer Prize. I will be getting to it at some point. God, I need, really need to try to get to Razorblade Tears and Gordo this year, hopefully. Uh, another Pulitzer book right there. I'm sure I'm going to miss some of them as we work our way through. More Edward Gorey. 
And the last shelf on this unit, uh, this was a birthday present from my neighbor. Uh, this was an LGBTQ in translation book, and I have not gotten around to it yet, and I need to. Um, this was the Pulitzer Prize finalist. This is a Pulitzer winner right there. I have read it. Burnt Sugar was good. Some other things, another Pulitzer book. God, I need to read Duck's Newburyport as well. And there's my Louise Erdrich, which I think continues. Oh, I had been debating whether or not I was going to unhaul that book, and I ultimately decided to keep it for now. Let's get back up to the top. Like Water for Chocolate. I have read all of these Jeffrey Eugenides books except for Fresh Complaint, and I would like to reread Virgin Suicides someday. Uh, Middlesex is a Pulitzer winner. I will be rereading it because I want to see if it's problematic. Up on the top, we have my You Are Loved bumper sticker. This uh, is sold by Montana Book Company for charity. The proceeds go to put a billboard of this up in Helena, Montana. They have yard signs, stickers, bumper stickers, um, the like. So you can call them and order it if you would like. These are my Franklin Library books, all except for The Good Earth. The Good Earth is a Reader's Digest edition, but it fits in. So that's where I put them so they would all be together. This is uh, Tennessee Williams' Notebooks, really great book. Alan the Pussycat, one of my favorite books from childhood, and just some cute stuff. All right. It's, oh, God, I really want to read Mr. Loverman at some point. The Trees, Woman of Light is a New Arrival. I got. I need to read Stone Butch Blues as well. I really liked this book. I ended up listening to it on audio. I do not have the other books in the series. So at some point, I need to finish, because I, I read this book like three years ago. I, I either read it just before I started my BookTube channel or not long after I did. This is signed... I really embarrassed myself because I waited forever to get this signed at an author event. It was the day the book was released and I got up there and she totally gave me a moment to say something to her and I completely blanked and couldn't think of anything to say, but she was lovely. Oh, Frank Green Tomatoes is a great book. There's my E.M. Forster section, which continues to right there. Another movie book. I have <laughs> two different types of Coraline. Some other books that I really need to get around to. Some books I have read. Another Pulitzer winner, Keepers of the House by Shirley Ann Grau. I really loved Matrix, which I got from the library earlier this year, so I need to get to Fates and Furies. Ordinary People is one of my favorite movies. The book is only okay, from what I remember. Here, this was an LGBTQ in translation book that I didn't get around to reading either. Loved Transcendent Kingdom. I really want to read Guapa. Um, this was recommended by someone at Montana Book Company, and I need to try to read it before we go to Italy, which is coming up very fast. I read Bang the Drum slowly and liked it, so I ordered the other books in the series, and I have not gotten around to reading them. Part of me feels like I should give up. And yet I can't. <laughs> so they're all still here. Mark Harris is one of my favorite journalists. So I have his books. Um, highly recommend Pictures at a Re Revolution. It's the only one I've read so far. I've watched the Netflix documentary series of Five Came Back, but I have not read the book yet. And I haven't read Mike Nichols, A Life. So other things. Uh, this is what the movie Carol was based on. So Isherwood, I really need to read the rides. We're watching God at some point. Another Isherwood, my Kazuo Ishiguro's. I have not read Pale View of Hills yet, but I would like to. Uh, I really need to get back to this and finish it this year. It's my, my goal. By the end of the year, I will be done with this book. I have a bunch of Hajin books because I really loved War Trash when I read it, and I think I went to Waiting next, and like that Ocean of Words was great, and then I don't remember anything about these two, except I didn't really like Match of the... Uh, Map of the Trail. Another Pulitzer book right there. Should have been a Pulitzer book right here. Pulitzer book right there. Pulitzer book. That's going to be a big one on my project. Uh, I really want to read that pretty cover. I got this from the UK. Shimmers, which is fun. Let's see if I can put that back. Okay. 
Last shelf is a little packed. You can see I have some lying on the top and more of the great books of the 20th century. I have a whole lot of stuff right there. All my Jumbo Lahiri's. Interpretive Maladies is a Pulitzer winner. So there you go. I uh, need to do more of Nella Larson. Yeah. So far, so good. Let's move on to the top. I have all my Sue Grafton books. I have the entire collection now. I had to recollect all of them, but I managed to do it. Uh, obviously, they are all used. I've been steadily pulling mass markets off of my shelf and trying to figure out what to do with them. That was a birthday card from a lovely friend and booktuber, Britta Bowler. This, that, and that were all early toys of Guinness's. We moved them up here so he wouldn't destroy them. You can kind of see this stuff and got ripped up. This is Wagmore. So they're for safekeeping. Here we go. I have been holding on to this book for a really long time because somebody I worked with at Borders recommended it to me and said that they really, 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 really loved it. And it always sounded intriguing, but I've never gotten around to it. And part of me feels like I should give up. And yet I can't. Pulitzer winner, To Kill a Mockingbird. Pulitzer winner, Aerosmith by Sinclair Lewis. Good book. Need to read this one. Another Pulitzer winner. This is going to be a doozy for the project for oh so many reasons. Not just the fact that it is a brick of a novel. Here's a Pulitzer Prize finalist. Hilary Mantel's, which continue... Oh no, just the two. I lost my copy of Wolf Hall. I don't know where it is. What are you going to do? Here is Ohio by Stephen Markley. I've heard a lot of really good things about that. Need to get around to it. It gets lost in the corners since these bookcases are dark. Here is another Pulitzer winner, the late George Apley. I'll get to that at some point. I used to pull out anything from my TBR, but it started getting really annoying and then the dogs kept coming in and just somehow managing to mess up the shelves, so I stopped doing that. Um, Life of Pi is not a book I want to read. I was just using that as an example for that. Some other books. At some point, these are, these are all alphabetical by author. At some point, I would love to have a nonfiction section, a graphic novel section, so I could separate a lot of this stuff out. Um, Cormac McCarthy, The Road is a Pulitzer winner. And a little cinnamon bun action right there. More books on the top. This section usually gets very crowded. Northwater, great book. Lonesome Dove, Pulitzer winner, already did a video about it. God, I really need to read Rainbow Milk. Every time I look at it on my shelf, I think, God, I need to read that. Um, Place for Us, really great book. Find Balance, really great book. Housemaid of Dawn, Pulitzer winner. Beloved, Pulitzer winner. Uh, frankly, Toni Morrison should have won more than one Pulitzer Prize in her lifetime, I think. Uh, there's Song of Solomon hiding back there. I like the Wind Up Bird Chronicle, but I'm not a big Murakami fan. I need to read uh, Women of Brewster Place. If you have not read Like a Love Story, that is a really great book as well. I have a couple of Joyce Carol Oates. Blackwater is the only one I've liked. I have not read The Accursed or We Were the Mulvaney's yet. Barack Obama. I remember The Things They Carried being a really great book. I need to get around to it. Hamnet is wonderful. Uh, Appointment in Samara shows up a lot on best books of the 20th century lists, so I got a copy, and then Butterfield 8 is the movie that won Elizabeth Taylor an Oscar for, well, her first Oscar for Best Actress, so part of me was just curious when I saw it in a bookstore. And then at the bottom, again, we're really packed, not a whole lot of space. Let's see if I can get in here. Hold on. Okay. At Swim Two Boys... I remember reading this. I don't remember too much about it. Um, my Heartstopper books, uh, volume two, I was reading when I shelved them, so it's up top, and I only have one and four in there. I'm missing volume three. Can't decide if I want to read this because of all the toxic conversation around it. Dorothy Parker is a genius. 
I, I don't know why I have like every Tom Perotto book, even though I'm not very enthusiastic about any of them, really. Uh, Vernon God Little was a Booker winner. I remember liking, oh, my beloved The Secret Lives of Church Ladies is in here. And that's it for these three bookcases. Let me see if I can move over. Here is the last bookcase. It's a little separated from the other two. These are either books that I loved in my childhood or collectible versions of things. And again, another toy of Guinnesses that we rescued from total destruction. I also, back here, hide some little reference books, um, additional copies of books that are on the shelves for reading purposes. Like I have that Reader's Digest edition of The Good Earth, but this is the one that I would actually read. I recently got a used copy of The Voice at the Back Door that had a great cover, but it was a little bit flimsy. So I tracked down another edition of it. So this is the one that I will actually read, but the other one is on my shelf. So here are, um, this is the first edition of the corrections, which has an error. So I will never get rid of it. Some of these are just used old copies of books. Some of my beloved children's books that is assigned copy of Aristotle and Dante dive into the waters of the world. Some used books my foster son gave me uh, for my birthday one year. Again, some like children's books. These are some of my favorites from when I was a kid. I don't think this is the version I had as a kid. I bought this later, but these. My sis little sister drew on this in a fit of pique one day. But God, nobody knows about that book, but I loved it. And uh, this was my favorite favorite. I used to beg my parents to read this to me. Uh, this is a first edition of The Virgin Suicides. I got it signed when I saw Jennifer Egan and Jeffrey Eugenides speak at the 92nd Street Y. This is actually a signed copy of To Kill a Mockingbird. I am not going to pull that out and try to show it to you. Uh, Airport was not in print when I watched the movie and I really wanted to read it. I went on a big disaster movie binge for a while. Um, so <laughs> I got a couple of those. You can see I also got Beyond the Poseidon Adventure, The Poseidon Adventure. Maybe that's the signed one. I don't know. One of them, I got myself a library edition that was supposed to be like a reprint of the first edition. And then one of them is not a, not a first edition, but it is signed by Harper Lee. So one of these is signed. I always tell Joel, if there's a fire, come to this shelf and grab these. Um, that's an early edition of Animal Farm. And the tower, which is what um, the Towering Inferno was based on. So that's all some fun stuff. This shelf, as you can see, is really jam-packed full of stuff. I actually highlighted stuff in this because it's about the Academy Awards and I found it fascinating. This is the very first winner of the Pulitzer Prize. Another Pulitzer Prize winner. I got my Annie Proulx, my Phoebe Robinson. Lots of stuff packed in here. I really need to read this book. This is uh, one of the current selections for the Women in Translation, uh, not Women in Translation, the LGBTQ in Translation read-along. Need to get to that. Here's a Pulitzer winner. I'm looking forward to rereading. That was a fun book. I have not gotten along with a lot of Philip Roth, but I did remember, I, I have read this and I did like it. Another Great Books of the 20th Century collection. Empire Falls is a Pulitzer winner. Let's move down. This was the International Booker winner for this year. I need to fit that in. Uh, this would actually qualify for Women in Translation Month. I hadn't realized that when I hauled it, but it would qualify. And this was a gift from Erica from The Broken Spine. Here are my J.D. Salingers, some Jose Saramago, Persepolis, Power of the Dog was my favorite book from last year. Some other fun things. Stone Diaries is a Pulitzer winner, Unless is another book by her. I didn't like, but I love the ending, so I'll never get rid of it. It's funny how that happens. A uh, nice old copy of A Tree Grows in Brooklyn. This is the fun cover of The Voice at the Back Door that I got, that it, but it's a flimsy copy, so I wouldn't really be able to read it. Okay. Uh, that is The Man Who Loved Children by Christina Stead back there. Let's move down again. All right. Angle of Repose, Pulitzer winner, lots of controversy around it, so it'll be interesting to do a reread of that and get to it for my Pulitzer project. Olive Kitteridge, Pulitzer winner. I love, I love Shuggy Bane. I love my brother's husband. 
Um, that is his more recent book. Sophie's Choice is not a Pulitzer winner, but Styron won a Pulitzer for something else. I really need to read The Joy Luck Club as well. And you also need to read The Makioka Sisters. I hear really great things about that book. Uh, Magnificent Ambersons was the second or third Pulitzer winner. I can't really remember which. It's a little dusty in here. I apologize for that. I should be taking better care of that. Uh, Overground Railroad. Love that book. Summons to Memphis is another Pulitzer winner. Uh, I need to really get around to Colm to Bean. There's a movie version of Women Talking coming out, so I might reread that at some point. Yeah, you can see I have a couple of Colm to Bean options, my Lord of the Rings books. I famously started the final book in the series and stopped about 50 pages in. I got so close and did not finish the series, but I love The Hobbit. So here we are getting close to the end, actually. God, I really need to read this. I had intended to do it for Women in Translation Month last year, didn't fit it in, and now Women in Translation Month this year is slipping past me, and I haven't done it either. Confederacy of Dunces, one of the posthumous Pulitzer Prize for Fiction books. The Neon Bible was something that John Kennedy Toole wrote when he was like 16 years old, and it's really impressive from that perspective, but it's one of the books that sent me on the path of thinking that maybe if an author didn't intend to publish something, leave it alone. He tried to get A Confederacy of Dunces published and couldn't, and that's one of the things that caused the depression that led to his suicide. Um, it's a lot more dubious about the Neon Bible. I'm really not excited about the John Updike. I'm missing one. Um, but I think Rabbit is Rich and Rabbit at Rest are the ones that have won the Pulitzer. And I need to do the whole series because Rabbit at Rest is the last book in the series. And I'm trying to read books in a series that came before the Pulitzer winner. So I'm kind of damned <laughs> at this point. I have a lot of Kurt Vonnegut's. As you can see, I moved them so they would fit in this direction. Big fan of his. Color Purple is a Pulitzer winner. All the King's Men is a Pulitzer winner. Got some Sarah Waters tucked into there. And this is the last shelf right here. Another Sarah Waters. Uh, Age of Innocence is a Pulitzer winner. I really need to get around to reading Edmund White at some point. Lots of Tennessee Williams. I love Tennessee Williams. The Yield was a great book. Some Tobias Wolfe. Uh, People in the Trees is a good Hanya Yanagihara book. I cannot sign off on any of the others. And there you go. That's actually the end right there. So I actually managed to do that really quickly, like really quickly. I'm astonished. I thought I was going to have to try to do it periodically throughout the week and managed to do it in like less than 30 minutes, the whole thing. Obviously, I did not spend a lot of time talking about each individual book. If there is something you would like me to zoom in on and spend more time on, or explain or tell you the story behind something, let me know and I will put it in an upcoming Friday Reads video. Um, just in case, because like I said, I glossed over a lot. And the first time around, I tried to say at least one thing about each book. Maybe that's why it took so long <laughs> and why I associate this with taking a really long time. So that's the state of things. If there's something you want me to zoom in on, give you a little bit more about, let me know in the comment section down below. And again, I will try to get to that in an upcoming Friday Reads video. I'm really impressed that this went as quickly as it did. Hope you enjoy it. And thank you for the suggestion, Lids221B. If you have suggestions for other videos or things you would like to see, let me know that in the comment section down below as well. As always, I really appreciate your time and I will be back. Until next time, happy reading.